I did it. I hit the record button. I'm committing my voice to the annals of history. I guess I better say something useful, huh? Well, welcome to the Trademark Barbecue. This is a podcast about U.S. trademarks and trademark law for people interested in such things. Who are these people? I don't know. Why listen to a trademark podcast when you could be listening to Mark Maron interviewing a comedian you've never heard of or a 19-episode true crime podcast that never actually tells you who killed the guy? I can't answer that for you. What I can do is try to make this informative, helpful, and if possible, somewhat entertaining. Uh, So I don't know who you are, but I do know who I am most of the time, and maybe you'd like to know that too. Uh, My name is John Hilla, and I'm an intellectual property attorney living and working in the Detroit area of Michigan. I represent clients for trademark registration and maintenance matters across the United States. Trademark practice is totally federal, so I can do that. It's pretty cool. However, that being the case, understand one thing up front here, and I'll say it again at the back end of this episode. I am not your attorney, probably. Listening to this podcast does not make me your attorney. This podcast is intended for general educational and, yes, advertising purposes only. I am not providing specific legal advice to you about your trademark or your brand or your legal matter of any sort. To make me your attorney, you need to hire me. You can visit my website at hillalaw.com, that's H-I-L-L-A-L-A-W.com, and fill out the contact form if you'd like to talk to me about doing that. But until you've done that and signed a retainer agreement and paid me a retainer fee, I am not your lawyer. Got it? Okay, great. Let's move on. Why is this a trademark barbecue? Uh, To be honest, I don't even like barbecues. If I wanted my food to taste like an embryonic sparrow roasting to death on a hot sidewalk, I would eat at one of those pretentious new restaurants popping up around downtown Detroit. I prefer to cook my, uh, and eat my food indoors, in air conditioning. I would rather sit in a regular, firm piece of furniture than a lawn chair that feels like it was reconfigured from used bondage gear. So why a barbecue? I don't know. Summer is upon us. It's getting hot out, at least here in the Detroit area, and it just jumped to my mind. Seemed catchy. But that's the way it goes with brands, usually. Large corporations will spend twice your annual salary hiring corporate branding consultants to come up with a new product or business name. You, my friend, will just think of something that you like, that seems like it makes sense, that has a bit of a ring and cachet to it, and then you'll sit back and you'll hope that no one else came up with it first and you'll want to protect it. That's where I come in, and that's where my cat enters the podcast, apparently. But a trademark lawyer will help you determine whether your idea is available to you, if it's something that even can be registered as a trademark, and a trademark lawyer will, if it is possible, help you to do that and to do a better job of all of those things than you will yourself. And by the way, I know people these days love to discount education, knowledge, expertise. This is the age of DIY, right? You vote with your gut. You drink beer you brew in your garage. You know more than your doctor does because you looked up your sore foot on Google, right? Wrong. Yes, there are discount form-filling services on the internet that you can use to draft your will, draft a real estate purchase agreement, and even register a trademark. But you're going to get what you pay for. Uh, But I'll stay off that soapbox for now. I'll certainly be covering the benefits a trademark lawyer provides in my next episode. But for now, let's keep this short and sweet. What in the world is a trademark? Let's talk about that. A trademark is a form of property ownership of the intellectual variety in that you have thought it up with your noggin. You created it intellectually rather than manually with your meat fists. It's a form of protection for what is essentially an idea, your business name, your logo design, your slogan, your advertising phrase or tagline, even a color or sound or smell can be registered as a trademark. Members of the Alpha Blah Blah Epsilon fraternity don't get too excited about that smell idea. You can't just register your BO as a trademark. A trademark registration does not protect your artistic output. It protects consumers' right to know that they are buying your BO uh, or product or service rather than someone else's. 
you can't register a trademark just because you thought of a cool word. A trademark registration at the federal level is available when you're actively selling a product or service in interstate commerce. That means across state lines. If you register a trademark for a product name that you cease to market and sell, you lose the trademark registration. Once you own a copyright, alternatively, it's yours until it slides into the public domain. You can lose a trademark registration pretty quickly after obtaining it if you fail to continue to prove to the USPTO that you are using it in interstate commerce. The trademark is intended to uniquely identify the source of a product or service being sold in commerce to consumers. When someone buys a can of Coke, they want to know it was bottled by the Coca-Cola Corporation of Atlanta, Georgia, and not by Uncle Jimmy and his garage. In fact, everyone listening just stay out of Uncle Jimmy's garage. Nothing good happens in Uncle Jimmy's garage. So, in a federal trademark registration application, you must prove to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, that's the USPTO I mentioned a minute ago, that your proposed name or logo or smell uniquely identifies your product or service, is not likely to confuse consumers, and does not merely describe the product or service itself, along with a couple of other things. Uh, Once your application is approved, you receive a number of advantages that I will talk about in tedious detail in one of my very next episodes. That's an upfront sort of an episode topic. Importantly, however, you get to use that little R in a circle mark next to your name or logo in advertisements and so forth. And everyone likes being branded, right? At least that's what Uncle Jimmy told me in his garage. Well, that's it for the Trademark Barbecue for now. Just an introduction and an alluring teaser of what is yet to come. Remember, just because you listen to this does not make me your lawyer. Visit my website at hillalaw.com, H-I-L-L-A-L-A-W.com, to learn more about my practice and what I can do to assist you with your trademark registration. If you're not in Michigan, just read the parts of the website about trademark. My other services are for Michigan residents only. In the meantime, make sure to cook your burgers all the way through and don't turn your steaks into shoe leather. So long for now.